Scoters are stocky, relatively large ducks which, for most observers, are almost invariably found offshore, usually in groups or even large flocks. Due to their habitat and the distance offshore that they are usually encountered, views are often poor, and so identification often has to rely on jizz and distribution of any pale markings. All species are predominantly black or very dark. By far the most common species, and the only one to breed in Britain, is common scoter. This is a bird that is slightly smaller than a mallard. There are a handful of breeding birds found near water in upland forests in Scotland and Western Ireland. There are probably fewer than 200 pairs in total, although the population does seem to be increasing. Males are a beautiful all-black duck with a knobbed beak and a very obvious yellow patch on the upper part of the beak. Females are a fairly plain dark brown with a similar shape but all dark bill. They have a distinctive paler cheek and foreneck leading to a crucial pale cheeked and black capped appearance. Common scoters breed across Ireland and Scandinavia and it is these birds which winter off our coast. It is also believed that our breeding birds join them. Over 37,000 birds winter here with flocks numbering over a thousand found in several favoured places such as in eastern Scotland and Carmarthen Bay. Some birds are likely to be found pretty much anywhere around the coast, however, with numbers highest where the mollusks they feed on are concentrated. In late summer, the males and immatures start gathering, to be joined from mid-August onwards by females and juveniles. Males appear all black, and that yellow bill patch is rarely visible, except when seen close to shore. Females are, in some ways, easier to spot, as the combination of pale cheek and that dark cap is really obvious. All scoters in swimming flocks habitually stretch and flap their wings while preening, and both male and female common scoters have plain, all dark wings. Velvet scoters are much rarer birds, although still regularly encountered offshore. None breed here, although some 3,000 or so winter with us, with birds originating from Scandinavia and also possibly Russia. The goal is usually to pick out an occasional velvet scoter amongst the flocks of common scoter, but in some places, such as in the Moray Firth, larger numbers congregate. Velvet scoter is a larger duck, although this may not be obvious in distant flocks. They tend to hold their relatively shorter tails lower to the water's surface. Common scoter can sometimes appear dumpy with a cocked tail, whereas velvet scoter are much sleeker. Male velvet scoter also have a yellow patch on their bill, although in a different position, along the base and sides and lacking that patch in front of the nostrils. Males also have a small white mark around the eye. This can sometimes be surprisingly visible. The head shape is different, and this can stand out on distant birds. A thicker, straighter neck with a peaked head and diagonal forehead leading seamlessly onto the bill. Common scoter, on the other hand, have shorter, thinner necks with a large, rounded head and the bill appearing more like a dabbling duck's, stuck on the front, if you will. Female velvet scoter have defining pale marks on their heads, a pale spot behind the bill and a really obvious pale ear spot. Perhaps the most obvious feature for velvet scoter, however, are the wing markings. All velvet scoters have a thick white secondary patch. Indeed, the American name of this species is white wing scoter. It is possible sometimes to see this on swimming birds, although sadly it is often obscured by body feathers or the waves. However, birds preening, flapping their wings, immediately give their identity away. Birds diving for food, unlike in common scoter, open their wings, again revealing their white wing patches. There is a third, much rarer species, a vagrant from America, surf scoter. Some surf scoters are seen off Britain and Ireland in most years, so this is a species to keep an eye open for. The size is intermediate between common and velvet scoter, but the birds have a much bigger, heavier head. In body outline and behaviour, they again seem halfway between the two more common species. Males should be relatively easy to pick out, all black, with black wings, and distinctive and obvious white markings on the head, a white forehead and rear crown. The bill is heavier and multicoloured, but from any distance will appear just pale with a black spot on the side. Females and younger birds are much more easily missed and there is no doubt that some go unidentified off our shores. They have a halfway house appearance between common and velvet scoter with a slightly paler cheek area and dark cap and more obvious pale spot behind the bill and behind the eye. 
and occasional females will also have a pale mark on the back of the neck.